The thing that makes it tricky when you put an engine in the front wheel, now the engine's in the front wheel, so it's going to turn. Well, you can't have a conventional wheel because you've got to have somewhere for the fuel lines to run out. So, I made this wheel. It's somewhat unusual. As I said, it bolts, fits on the flange on the other side of the engine, only has spokes on one side. And I've got all this clearance, so now all my fuel lines, throttle cables, everything can come out this side, and then this side just goes on the other side. Works. I made this. So, let me kind of put this together so I can sort of show you how this works, if you're interested, you know. Um, let me take, the, the easiest way to put this together, I found, because I put this together and fucking taking it apart three times now. No, see, three, there's that number again. No, I've done it more than three times. So anyway, let's do it this way. Because I've found this is the easiest way to do it. I'm going to lay this down so it doesn't fall, which I'd probably cry. <clears throat> so anyway, this is our flange, kind of like the way a wheel bolts on a car. Here's the wheel, obviously. I've got a witness mark as to which hole. Look at that, that fits in there like a, I'm not going to say it. Man, that thing's tight, like the first night. Well, damn, I machined that nicely. Okay. See, it's not the bolts that are going to be supporting the wheel because I've got the inside of this flange machined, the wheel flange perfectly machined to accept that flange. So it's the actual flange, which is 5 eighths steel, supporting everything. And these are countersunk. So it'll be nice and smooth. That. Look at that. It's lovely. I've decided as soon as I get this bike finished in the next couple of days, I'm going to shave. This is really annoying the hell out of me, this beard. And I'm a civilized man. Okay, so now we've got the axle and the flange bolted to the wheel. Turn that upside down. Then Now I have my spacer in there. You see, this will spit on there. This is why I've got tubes holding everything so nothing can interfere with the wheel at that point. Then we'll put our first bearing on there. It goes in there. Now I'm probably going to lay it down because it'll be easier. The shims for the clutch. Then, the final drive sprocket. Look, it's got three groups of three holes in it. I'm an idiot sometimes. I get obsessed with things. The thing is, as you can see with a lot of this stuff, things only just clear everything. Like, it only just clears all the way around the rim. These only just clear everything. That was the thing when you're building an engine in the front wheel. It's like you only got so much real estate. Um, that I was so worried with the electric start because it's only a small electric motor and if I didn't have a geared ride, if I had to go bigger, I would have been screwed. So anyway, now what we'll do and then obviously these, and you can see the other side, we'll put our bearings on there. Now what we normally do is the way it works, I'll have to put the, this fender on first and then these come off and then we can put the wheel in. But we'll do it a different way so you can sort of see how it works. So 